my God. What? I think I figured it out. What? Oh, oh my God. Oh, there we are. Son of a bitch. Let's start over. All right. I... <laughs> We're live. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. What? Whose fault? So I'll explain it all later. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our live show. That is a half hour late. Almost. Let's start by saying Scott was late in the beginning. Uh, Scott wasn't this late. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but it would have went a lot easier if you were here 15 minutes earlier. Here we go. Here we go. So there is multiple fucking start streaming buttons. And there's one in YouTube you have to go to to hit and not from here. Even though I can see it on this window that we're live running like it's going, it's not actually live until you hit one tiny little stupid button up in the corner. Anyway, how are you, Scott Johansson? Now nah, we're happy. <laughs> we're going to quit. I'm not happy. I was ready to cancel the show. I was 30 seconds away from canceling the show and I probably on- ending Model Club TV forever. Uh... <laughs> My God. So we are here, episode ninety-one. Let me start over with all of that. We're gonna I have tell you what your, what your uh, Vlad Petniki here in a minute because that's now behind. What your buddy um, Brian Clark said. <laughs> what did Brian Clark say? He said this is like watching Paul Gill trying to figure out Discord after two years of doing. Oh, it. I was. It kind of was just like that. So how is everybody? How are you, Scott? I'm great. Wow, my God. We're going to bring Vlad Pitnicki on right away because we'll get all the technical issues right off the bat done and screwed up because I know this is coming. Who's uh, Vlad Pitnicki? So Vlad has finished up a King Kong diorama. We're going to check in with him in a minute um, and then come back and do the rest of the show because normally that was going to be right in there. Oh, my God. I'm so frustrated. I have to calm down. I have to calm down. So, yeah, the show was almost over forever. <laughs> it's where we were. Oh. My God. Anyway. Especially when I said, you said yeah. it was my fault. Scott comes in late and then starts ribbing jokes while nothing's working. That's always the best way to make everything go so much smoother. Look, it finally worked. <laughs> mm. Oh, my God. That sucks. All right. All right. How is everybody? Let me close that window. Let me get this back up. Let me go back to what I wanted to do right here in the beginning. To make it feel a little bit more appropriate, let's catch everybody up here for a second. Uh, there we are. Hey, who was that? Play another model. Oh my god! I can't believe you! You have way too many of those things. You need to sell some of them. You're wasting all your time and money on models. You frustration. What you have? <laughs> all right, there was the intro. Hello, everybody. We can see your chat messages now. <laughs> Everything is a mess. Oh, let it roll off. Let it roll off. What's new, Scott? How's life? I don't know. I was almost out of a job here. You were almost out of a job. I was too. Oh, this sucks. Ah, there it is. All right. We're going to bring Vlad in here and let's see. Let's everybody hang with us for a second because things went totally sideways. So. We have one guest. This is going to look weird for a second. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. Cleaning my glasses so I can watch this mess. Admit clarity. Vlad in here. <laughs> Things are going to go bad. And participants. All right, Vlad, can you hear us, sir? <laughs> now watch it. <laughs> it's going to go even worse. Vlad, everything's gone sideways completely. Tell me he's got to turn his YouTube off if he's got YouTube. Yeah, Vlad, make sure YouTube's off if you're there. How are you, sir? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you fine. And we can oh, hear you go. too. Oh, it's working. At least something right. worked today. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the first. Yeah. Uh, all right. So <laughs> why don't we just, why don't you just like uh, introduce the bit that we're going remote? Oh, we are remote. It's already too late. We are, we're, you're, you're on, buddy. Game. You're on. You're on. <laughs> go. All right, Jimmy, Jimmy, plug in that cable, Jimmy. Hurry up, Jimmy. We're going live in five. <laughs> Hurry up, Jimmy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. This is Walter Mitchell on a live remote. I'm speaking to you from Fifth Avenue. 
right underneath the Empire State Building. King Kong has climbed to the top of the Empire State Building, following his rampage through downtown Manhattan. Now he's carrying Anne Darrow, his captive, in one of his paws. Flying high above the scene, you can see the Navy's airship make it. Normally on patrol over the Atlantic Ocean, she changed course for New York as soon as a call for help went out. Well, she's launched four of her fighter planes, F-9C Sparrowhawks. They've been circling the building, waiting for Kong to put down and Darrow down and out of harm's way. I can't see her anymore. Here comes a plane now. Here comes one of the planes now. Watch out for that big monkey's fist. He missed him. Well, we'll send you back to the studio for a word from our sponsor. <laughs> well, we'll be back with you as soon as something happens. <laughs> and see him. Ah, that's great. Vlad, share with us what you've been working on. How are you, sir? Um, I'm doing fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Yeah, I, I didn't quite have the... Uh... All righty. There you go. So this is the uh, this is the poster that served as the as the uh, the color scheme. I had uh, before I forget because it's a very important. Um, I asked John Legrand to paint Kong and and Dara for me, and he did an incredible job. So again, we're talking about Tony Cipriano's incredible Kong, what I call Kong up top kit, uh, King Kong on top of the Empire State Building. And as some of you may remember, I did a uh, Resident Motion Empire State Building kit bash last year. And lo and behold, when I thought that was going to be the be all and end all of my bashes, in April, Tony Cipriano on Facebook unveiled the plans for his, what I call Kong up top, uh, 3.0 in my case. Well, it just grabbed me and I said, well, I have to get that kit. Now, first I thought it's too big to kit bash, but when I got my hands on it last uh, November, I said, I have to do something with this. And fortunately, building that concave last year kind of gave me the skills um, and the idea of how to recreate part of the Empire State Building. And so unlike last year, when I kind of did a stylized recreation, this is actually a, a pretty close to, to real 120 scale recreation of the 103rd floor and 102nd floor of the Empire State Building, which is right below the dome. So down here, you could see the 103rd floor ends with old catwalk here. And there's some pretty, pretty disturbing uh, videos on YouTube. I mean, if you watch it on YouTube, see a guy walking along here and you start getting, you know, whatever the word is for a fear of heights, you get it. So <laughs> yes. you can see, put the doors on there. Now, what this is made out of is three one inch thick rounds of wood. I found a fellow who could cut them, cut up the scale for me. Um, and then there's styrene strips, obviously, uh, for this for this detail. And these are ships, model ship doors that I found that are roughly in scale. And then the where the building winds is three more pieces of uh, one inch thick wood rounds topped by a one inch thick wood donut, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a big hula hoop made out of wood. Uh, lo and behold, there's a fellow in California on Etsy who cuts these things to size for all kinds of projects and things. And that, that is what made this possible. More, more styrene strips here, which were heated and then hammered into place because hey, it's wood underneath it, so it was easier than, than trying to glue it. The bottom piece harkens back to last year's build. It's actually a big uh, PVC pipe um, onto which... I put a, another big wood donut down here for the bottom and then little styrene strips up and down and uh, acrylic panes, which I painted up with uh, uh, gloss black paint on, on the rear. And that's the 102nd floor wall of windows observatory. If you actually go to the Empire State Building, you can go up there and it's just a big open floor. You can walk in the floor to ceiling windows. So, but... Once I got the building built, I said, I have to get a plane. Okay, I can't do this scene without a plane. <laughs> I couldn't find any 120 scale biplanes from the 30s as a kit. But lo and behold, I did find this F9C Sparrowhawk. Now, you may be wondering, well, what is this contraption on top of it? Well, at first blush, I thought about cutting it off, but that lasted for just one second. 
And then I got a better idea. These planes were built for two airships that the Navy had in the early 30s. They were designed to be launched from the airship and then, then hook back to the airship and then get winched back up inside um, the Akron and the Macon with the airships. The idea was they would extend the Navy's reconnaissance range at sea. The airship would go out to sea, the plane would drop, and then the plane could fly hundreds of miles more and then come back and get pulled back up. So once I decided I was going to leave it in there, it became obvious that I had to do an airship. <laughs> <laughs> so I did uh, a 1520 scale uh, Macon up here, which you can see. And uh, through the magic of forced perspective, don't you know? Let's see if I can do this right. You look at it from down here, and it kind of looks like she's flying a couple of thousand feet above the Empire State Building. Well, the planes are buzzing Kong. That's really cool. I like the force. Yes, that's good. You know, I don't plan these things out. They just, <laughs> just like the build. I got Kong and the dome and I looked at it and I said, I have to do something with it. And then it just kind of snowballed. And the last little detail, I thought, gee, if he still had chains on his manacle, they kind of be flying up in the air. And that might kind of help to help to uh, make it add a little bit of motion, if you will. And I've been remiss about one thing. I forgot to turn on the spotlights so that you can actually see uh, what Kong, Kong, Kong's paint-up looks like, particularly his eyes, which, again, they're based on, I don't know if you could, I don't know how, much, how well you could see it. Go up a little bit, red. up a little bit, and then we can see his eyes. Yeah, there you go. Like that? Yeah. Yeah, so, th so this is the, this paint-up is based on that poster, and the poster, he's got these red, angry eyes. So I asked John, uh, John Legrand to paint him like that. Again, John Legrand painted Kong and and Faye for me because I figured this might turn out to be like the you know the biggest biggest the best and biggest bash I've ever done. <laughs> I want to I want to get a paint up of Kong that's worthy. Um, so he did an incredible job. And those of you who are old MCTV fans might recognize the alcove and it looks quite different. Well, that's because. Uh, about a uh, month and a half ago, I repainted the alcove. I hated the color. It was before anyway, crimson. <laughs> so I repainted the whole alcove um, and then painted a cloud on there to serve as a backdrop to, to the scene. And uh, for good measure, I even I even painted the I even painted the lights blue. Oh, no. so nice. So, I didn't notice this. <laughs> Is your wife still happy with this? Is she still okay with you having this stuck right there? <laughs> Say that. Well, you should say that. Now, before we get into that topic, which is going to be a quick little segue, uh, do you guys have any other um, any questions or comments? Or how long did everything take? And I know Scott has a couple of questions. Uh, it took about five months. Uh, I started doing it in November. Now, keep in mind, I'm gainfully employed, so this is you know weekend here, weekend there, an hour here, hour there. But yeah, it took about five months. And and folks, like I told you last year when I was on the show, I'm really a part time modeler. <laughs> and uh i'm gonna drop the mic here you know whatever i do in the future in the future is not likely to be anything near as grand or nice as this turned out so if this is my hill i'm gonna die on it so anyhow <laughs> I, where'd you put the old one ah well okay all right now uh, i got a question for, I, I got i got Question for Scott and also for Brian, because I've been listening to your guys' most recent model in a movie. So listen, uh -oh. listen up. This is for both <laughs> you guys. Now, you all might remember that uh, last year when we did a little tour of, of, of our home, uh, Scott was kind of envious uh, that uh, <clears throat> my wife uh, allowed me to put my 20-inch uh, tall bash of Paradise Godzilla with a big breath coming out of it that uh, Bill Jones graciously uh, gifted me right uh, right uh, here on a uh, in the dining room okay oh, wow. yeah and uh, as far as the old Kong up top goes well there he is he is now the uh, poss possibly the coolest dining table decoration in all of modeldom wait really it's sitting on the dining room table oh yes there was no other place to put it. You see, it's so big. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Scott, I got the uh, sideshow Thanos. She, she, she came she in. 
Uh, sorry, Scott. So, Brian, Brian, you know, I know you're watching this down in the basement with all of your bills, <laughs> like, piled up to the ceiling. This is how it's done, brother. Yeah. <laughs> you just put it there. Brian's afraid of his wife because she can take him in a fair fight. Um, well, it's, it's a funny story. Um, I, yeah, I almost forgot. My wife allowed me to put, put these things here and some other things around the house. So long as I don't ask her to cook well. And before any of you who's thinking I'm sleeping in a doghouse, she gave me that joke to use. So let's go back <laughs> to this year's bit. So I had a um, sideshow Thanos, which was a big piece come in. Uh -huh. And when I unboxed, I unboxed on my dining room table. And it sat there for about a week, and my wife finally said, either you move it or I'm going <laughs> to. Every, every hobby model is uh, worst nightmare. <laughs> so, so there it is. Um, a couple of people have commented um, they like the finish you have on the uh, Empire State Building. What do you use to get that? Well, that? because of the size of this kit, I had the idea of, well, let me go over to uh, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot. And uh, let me see if they've got any chrome paint, chrome metal paint. And they did. And so I sprayed it, and it looks so good that I said, I am not touching this. So it's just chrome color paint that you could get at any any uh, Lowe's or uh, Home Depot. But it reminds me of one thing. One interesting thing that people might not realize is that this kit is completely modular which means it's eight separate pieces that are held together by gravity and nothing else. This bottom piece, that's one. This is two. This is three. Obviously, the dome is four. Kong is five. Um, the plane is six. The manacle is seven. And the plane propeller, which is just a, a tinted uh, acrylic disc that actually found that somebody sells, cut to the right size, five inches. They're all removable. So whenever we move, and my wife tells me eventually we're going to have to move, which I've got to hate, you know, whenever we retire down. Well, maybe down you're the... moving. <laughs> yeah, but so when, when that day comes, it comes apart in the eight separate pieces that are a lot easier to, you know, wrap up yeah. and carry. So these bottom three pieces, I mean, it's a solid wood, solid wood, and this is a pretty big PVC, PVC pipe that's about this thick. So they're pretty heavy. Cool. There'd be no, no practical way of moving something like this in one piece without, you know, risking serious damage, especially if I'm 10 or 15 years older. <laughs> <laughs> so Notice um, I'm hoping to stay here for a while yet. So I have another question. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm not picking on you. But we've, we've toured another gentleman's house. I forgot. What was his name? That Joe. Was there? Huh? Joe. Joe. And he was also big into customizing Baradour. and stuff like that. And oh, he, he is the Joe is the king of yeah. the free and, and so, so, Joe, I'm, I'm just a, curious: Have you guys ever met any resistance from the original sculptors or artists as far as reposing their stuff? Or oh no, has, I have you always been you know good with it, you know type of thing. Um, I, I, he's done a lot more, especially with a lot more name sculptors, you know, than I have, yeah. but I can tell you that, you know, last year when I did resin in motion, you know, Mike Matty, who's a sculptor of that, the one that's in the dining room that I showed you mm -hmm. was extremely, extremely supportive and helpful. And, uh, you know, every step of the way, um, he had very positive comments because we kept up a correspondence and. And I did the same thing that I did with Tony Cipriano this year, and that is any you know work in progress photos. And then when it was finally done, I sent I sent to him first. And same thing with with Tony Cipriano. He's been nothing but uh, supportive and appreciative. And in fact, all right, now I got to fess up here, uh, <laughs> Mr. Butterfingers. When I was packing up Kong and Faye to send them to John Legrand, right? You see Faye down here. Mm -hmm. I learned I learned a lesson. Uh, can you see her? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I learned a lesson the hard way, and that is that uh, printed uh, printed resin is kind of brittle. Because I was packing them up in the garage, and I dropped her. And uh, 18 pieces, pieces <laughs> later, I had a problem. And uh, I I told Tony the same day he printed out another one and mailed it straight to John, and they 
John LeGrand got her the same day that my 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 Kong package came. So again, Tony, thank you. You're a gentleman. You're an incredible artist. I mean, you've done so many things. You, it wouldn't be fair to say this is your best work, but this is the best Kong kit I've ever seen. <laughs> Uh -oh. just you're hurting Scott's feelings. You're hurting Scott's Whoa. feelings. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Got no no th that I have ever seen. I haven't seen. I, I know you produced that giant Kong. I never, I've never seen that one in actually in person. And I haven't seen most of the Kong kits out there in person. But oh, the ones that I have seen, this is the one that grabbed me, and I had to do something with it. Cool. And now yeah. our good friend Tony's making another one that everyone wants to buy. So, um <laughs> Uh, the T the T Rex yes, car. Yes. Yeah, I've seen that one. So, um, of course, I'm running out. Of I agree with you. Thing. It's a great, you know, it's a great piece. Tony did a great job, and um, it, it's an impressive uh, display you have there, my friend. It's uh, thank you, and <laughs> kudos to your wife for allowing that because mine would throw me right out of the house. <laughs> okay, I'm lucky uh, I have. A couple of questions. Sorry. Real quick in the chat, CG Blade wants to know Does Vlad have any other dioramas besides Kong one? Is what I'm guessing. Um yeah, I do. And I I would say look at my look at my web gallery, except it's been down for two months because apparently Lycos doesn't provide customer support anymore. So I don't I don't know if it's ever gonna be up. But I but to make it to answer CG's question. I don't have anything remotely approaching this in both complexity. I have some dinosaur dioramas that I've done, but nothing like this. However, funny you should mention that. Uh, the diorama that I put aside to do this one, uh, that I, I'm working on a dinosaur diorama, spoiler if you haven't seen my show from last year, I, I started back into modeling more than 20 years ago, kit bashing dinosaurs, and that's still what I love to do. So I kit bashed three 120 scale dinosaur so it's going to be a pretty huge diorama and uh but that one i'm uh bill jones uh up in austin is is painting him up painting him up for me so cool uh that's gonna hms heavy metal spike says loves the texture idea on the background mural too and he says good uh well worth the effort vlad as well so and brian clark yeah. said his wife is four foot eleven of fury full of fury. <laughs> He said his basement is fine, just fine. <laughs> so trying to go back and look at some of these. Uh, figure kit garage, cool. the metal finish on that is beautiful. Some comments and uh you know, I'm glad I'm glad to hear that because that was my instant impression after I saw the things dry out on the patio. I said, My God, I'm not gonna touch that. It looks like real polished stainless steel. I know a lot of a lot of modelers, you know, are gonna weather the Empire State Building and frankly. I don't have the skills to. Yeah, do you that need some uh, to scale uh, pigeon poop on there. I would think at some point. But, you know, in, in my defense, this alternate timeline timeline is happening in 1933, and the Empire State Building has just opened up the same year, so there wouldn't okay. be anywhere. Uh, Very cool. Well, thank you so all, much for joining that's us. That's how I justify to myself not touching it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. This was fun. Sorry for the we had. Before you probably don't even know how many technical issues we had before you got here. It was just crazy, one. but we really just said one. But thank I'm you for sure holding in there for a second. I'm sure you guys will. Uh, <laughs> we'll straighten we'll it out. Joke about it in the future. Yes, we will. Awesome. Thank, thank you guys you, so much. Keep up the great. Hey, work. if anyone wants to get a hold of you, where's the best place to find you? Uh the best place to find me is probably Facebook. Okay. There you go, Vlad yeah. Petnicky. Yeah, there's, only, there's only one Vlad Petnicky, so you're not going to have any trouble finding me. <laughs> Awesome. Or, Thanks, or figure, man. Figure kit, figure kit Facebook group. Awesome. Or figure modelers Facebook group. All right, cool. Thanks, man. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, Thank buddy. you, guys. All right. Thanks, buddy. Let me hang up here. We'll go to us. That's going to look weird for a second. And participants. Ooh. Don't report to Zoom. All right. There we go. Boom. He's gone. There we go. All right. Normal episode from here on out. Our okay. Episode 91. You good, Scott? Yeah, but the screen it did go wacky. Now I'm looking at it. it oh, yeah. I but on my end, it's all good. I think everything's still here. Hold on.
All right. So right off the bat, we are going to do a giveaway because, and let me get to that. Well, so we missed our intro, right? Yeah. I played the intro afterwards. We're good. Uh, right off the bat though, I do want to, we're going to, we're going to skip around just for one second. Um, for the last the last episode we did not um no one claimed the Nosferatu. I never heard from the person that won and the person that did get a hold of me wanted the Morticia. So I have this Nor- uh Nosferatu up for grabs right now. Uh Scott, what's the question? What should people say? In chat, you're gonna be typing, getting your typing fingers ready. How are they gonna win this? How are they gonna win this? Yeah. Who was here first? Does anyone know? Can, is there a way we can? <laughs> Who's stuck around the longest? Who made the first comment? You did. The first one I see is, uh, yeah, not going back far enough. Yeah, it doesn't go back far enough. Yeah, it doesn't go back far enough. So, what do you want to do? <laughs> Boggy Creek says he'll take it. Of course he says. Of course that. he will. <laughs> go back to sleep, Cam. All right. Uh, I know. To see who watched a uh, model in a movie, first person to type. What's the next movie we're watching on a model in a movie? Who's the first person? What's the next movie we're watching on a model and a movie? Brian Clark, you are not eligible. <laughs> he probably forgot by now. Yeah, he probably did. So first, what, what's the next movie for a model in a movie? And you get the Nosferatu if you want it. Here we go. Up for grabs, somebody. Waiting. And I know there's a delay, so. So while we're on the delay. Yes. At the end of this episode, we're going to have a special tribute to uh, our friend Rick Evans. It passed literally the day we filmed last episode, was it? Yeah. So we didn't get a chance to put in anything. So we're going to have a little tribute at the end here for him. And 16 Candles, Godzilla vs. Kong. Stormheart 911 just got it. Spaceman. Spaceman is the next movie for model movie. So Stormheart. Stormheart, send me a email at modelclubtv at gmail.com. That's what we're watching next. Spaceman. Okay. So Stormheart, you got it. Let me write that down. Scott, keep talking. So anyway, back to Rick Evans real quick. Um, I I would talk to Rick probably monthly for the last couple of years. And I always see Rick at Wonderfest. Obviously, I wasn't there last week, last time. So um, it's, um, you know, it was. Uh, but I put you full him, screen for a second. I talked to him like a month before he passed. And I know he was battling a melanoma, but I didn't know it had apparently spread or done whatever it had done. And next thing we know, uh, He's gone. So again, it's a shrinking hobby. And uh, Rick was a good dude. He never had a bad word to say to anyone about anyone. And uh, he was a good ambassador for the hobby. So at the end here, Jason put together a little collage of Rick's work. And we're also going to, um, I think, put that up as a separate thing. Yeah, it'll and be up separate so that people, if so they want to share it from the family, post it on Rick's page and his family can see it and stuff like that. And don't have to sit through uh, all this nonsense. So, what are you doing there with that? Uh, it looks right, like you're just, uh, stirring the pot. Just some, <laughs> some decorations. Just some decoration. Where could I... Decoration? Okay. So, um, anyway, yeah, yes, Scotty Mills, right. he was the opposite of me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> He totally was. So yeah, stick. It'll be right there at the end. We will uh, take care of that stuff. So, uh, all right, you ready? <laughs> I feel so out of place, out of sorts. We have a um another. We'll we'll do news and reviews now. Um, we have another death to report that we missed, and this was sent in. Guzfink sent this to me, and I. It's it's weird because I haven't thought about this person in a while because I fell off of dinosaur kits for a while. And okay. uh, Michael Trissick, I think that's how you say his name, passed away back in January. 
And so if you were into any sort of dinosaur sculpting or Oscar winner for Jurassic Park and Terminator 2, and but in the early days of Garage Kit, was one of those guys doing a lot of dinosaur sculptures and some other things. So he passed away as well recently and uh, sucks because an amazing sculptor, his website is still there. So if you just Google his name, go over to his website, I'll put a link when I get everything sorted out and edit there. But Michael Trisic passed away. And I think that, and again, if I'm saying it wrong, Please, somebody in chat, correct me. I think that's how you say his last name. It's one of those names I've always seen, like online. I've never heard someone actually like say it. Mm-hmm. So he passed away too. It's like, man, it's, it's been shrinking. Weird. Yeah, it's shrink, shrink, and shrink, and shrink. So, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Wonderfest. First up for news and refuse, mm-hmm. uh, the the chapel. There's been some changes. Scott, you want to tell us about that and what happened? Well, from what I've heard, those of us that are Wonderfest long-time goers, the chapel area, which is the area that kind of juts out from the main dealer's room, has now been walled off. And um, there'll be no more dealers <laughs> or guests down there. Walled off, not for construction, but it sounds like no, permanently. it's done. It's remodeled. It's done. It's gone. So for those of you going to Wonderfest, a lot of people, a few people have been now moved to dealer's room B because of that. Oh, wait, hold on. So, Before, what's going to happen? I think everyone hit a commercial. I think every 30 minutes, a commercial hits the stream. So right at 30 minutes, like we have to kind of, we just hit 32 minutes. So there might've been a commercial there. So I don't have a commercial up yet. Yeah. Some people might have got it. But yeah, it's been everyone's been moved over to dealer room B. So um kind of weird. Um that also made me worry a little bit about how much of the renovations in the rest of the hotel are uh actually gonna be completed. And it's just I'm having nightmares of the year the hotel we had to go across the street. Oh and things being a disaster. So if anyone does know about how the hotel's going to look, like anyone Wonderfest related, let us know so we can kind of get those fears out and squashed. If you go to the Crown Plaza's uh, Louisville website, there's actually a video that shows you how the lobby and bar and everything are going to look. So Yeah. Uh, check Heavy Metal Spike says use ad blocker, but then that steals all the money from us. <laughs> so, no. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, I love doing this for free. It's the best, especially on days like today. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, it's, I don't know. The other thing, the very important thing, though, I, if, again, Wonderfest dealers, please send us very two minute or less videos. The first episode in May, we're going to do a little montage of anyone that sent something in. Please send us your plans for Wonderfest, things you got coming out, what's going on, what's new, and we'll just do a quick Wonderfest preview for people. So, again, send them over to modelclubtv at gmail.com. Uh, and while we're at it, if you want to leave us a voicemail, which we have for voicemail this episode, if you want to leave a oh, voicemail, listen to. you don't listen to them yet? <laughs> of course. Hmm. <laughs> of course. You know, they only have been there for a couple hours today. 708 816 42. 99 708 816 4299 is a voicemail. Um, I hope people send them in. Last time we tried it, nobody sent them in. Dan Garden, since it was his idea this year, better send one <laughs> at least. And but that's where we are. Uh, up next, Bill Wilson wrote he backed out of Wonderfest. That ain't the first thing. Oh, he's yeah, backed. yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, that saves the rest of us. Whew. Thank God Bill's yeah. out. Yeah, man. But tell him where to go eat dinner. Tell him where to go. Yeah, man. So much easier. Yeah, where do I go to the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> In your pants like the rest of us. All right. Um, so I'm wondering, good. do we have to wait for everyone to catch up? No, I think so. I think we can just keep going. Uh, I'm going to do... There we go. Scott, this one's you. World record price. Let's talk about that. World record price. That's crazy. Um, so the description on this was a, I guess it was a sealed Godzilla's go-kart 
but they cut the bottom so that they could open it and um, check the contents, which obviously for $36,000, I, I think I would want to check the contents too. I wouldn't care if it was sealed or not. Um, this has been forever the rarest, if not one of the rarest. At this point, I'm going to say the rarest Aurora model kit out there. Can you talk about why it's the rarest first? Because I don't know. Why is it the rarest? Distribution was very low. It was the last two of the monster rods. And um, I never even saw them advertised in Famous Monsters. So they weren't where the other four were. The uh, This one and the King Kong Thronester were not. Okay. So the those two were the rare. This one, of course, being Godzilla, you have cross collectors that collect Godzilla stuff and stuff like that. The last one I saw go for sale was like $10,000. I thought that was crazy. Okay. <laughs> really? So $36,344. Um, the kit's been reissued. And I, I have owned an original, not in a box, but I have owned an original. And there was a time... I would have loved to have owned original, and if if I was filthy rich and had nothing left to throw money at, I probably would throw money at something like this. But... And so this was sealed in the box, like yes, okay. and it was what auction site did it go up on? Hakes, Hakes auction site. Okay, so and again, man, thirty six thousand um, dollars. That's a good down payment for something. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is, and, you know, I've paid a lot of money for model kits before, but not that much. Would you? So. I, I wouldn't. Who would, like, I guess you got to be somebody who has a lot of disposable income. <laughs> I wonder who it is. Like, it's pro I wonder if it's, like, I, I, I don't someone know. famous. I, I, because it's probably So, and again, I go back to, what's this stuff going to be worth in in 30 years right all of us that know what it is are gone oh well, some and... of that goes along with other things that are worth a lot of money like baseball cards like yeah but baseball cards there's history there's so... history with the model kit too like people who yeah but not like baseball cards. no not yeah that's true that's true baseball cards probably wasn't the best i mean kids today don't even watch old movies so it's like not i don't even know how many kids collect baseball cards these days i have a friend although I have a friend who quit teaching and opened up, well, his partner's in a baseball card shop in Indiana right over the border. And he, the baseball card shop did over a million dollars worth of sales last year. He destroyed his, his teaching salary. Like to the point where I want to just jump off a bridge after seeing it. But Scotty, Scotty Mills says this is why he's holding on to his beanie baby. <laughs> I keep holding, pal. <laughs> He's holding them close and hugging them and smelling them. I think you're out of focus. Now people will know why there's a lot of edits when we see Scott try to refocus his camera a hundred times. Uh, up next, we have uh, Tony Cipriano's Sculpting Superhero Class in ZBrush is on sale right now for $35. So head on over if you're interested in learning how to sculpt superheroes. Uh, Scott, do you have that class? Did you watch any of it? I haven't watched any of that. I have all Tony's classes. Um, cool. Yeah, they're good. I haven't, um, so we have that. And then let's go back to us. And then next is Nostalgic Resin Productions. And I found this really good picture of David that he posted. And I think it's awesome. So here's David. Uh, for those of you who don't know what David Horvath looks like, there you go. Big Daddy uh, Dave. <laughs> Big Daddy Dave. Uh, so. This time, we do have some giveaways as well. So I want to go through everything first and then talk about what the giveaways are. Uh, Scott, what do you always say about people and their sculptures? Use them. That's what you say. Use them. Oh, yeah. Use them. Yeah. Use them to the most you can. And what did he do? He took his Kolchak and turned it into a bust. You have this in a box by you? Dun, dun, dun. All right. So as here's long a cold check. Pictures, I don't know that I'm going to open it because I'm running behind. Okay. It's heavy uh, though. I can open, open it, it if you want. Open it while, it while we're talking about it. Uh, so while we have this while uh, while you're opening. I'll show the other things. Uh, we have the cold check the bus coming out. 
So head on over to Nostalgic Resin Productions. We also have the Buffalo Girls kit is out as well. I think he sent you one of these. He did. Okay. Um. So hold on. What do we got here? Okay. Let me, we uh... have the cold check. We have the pieces here. I should just if I had to open it, I should just be able to keep it. Um. <laughs> Oh, look, we got the little cold check. Wait, hold on. You're not, it's not on camera. We can't oh, see that. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We got the little cold check, which I didn't realize was. Uh, yeah, there is it. a tiny one. You made a different scale. We got the little cool. cold check. And I'm going to resize your window. Things. Everybody don't get mad. We have some various uh, things bit. from the movie, the Jason Walker Tiki. Um, Make it a little bigger so people can see it. Because yours is getting blown up. Cross for the base. Nice little main plate. Gostini's printing it. You can light it from behind. <laughs> oh, you could. That's a good idea. Um, got some pumpkins and stuff here. Okay. And, oh. Of the camera. Camera. It's pretty nice. Going in. Let me go back to uh web window there. Put some more Buffalo Girls pictures up while you're looking. Okay, so this is funny to me, and I'll tell you why. Um, anybody that's ever uh <laughs> gotten anything in this stuff and doesn't know what to do with it, it makes great. Dude, um, they're they're airbags. It's great. Yeah. So, what we have here is the cold check bust. All right, how's someone going to win this, Scott? Oh, I don't get to keep it. Damn nope. It. How is somebody going to win this? How is someone going to um, win it? Go back. Why don't, oh, wait, there's more in here. Is that the Buffalo Girls, or is that more for this? Oh, more for this. Okay. So what do we have here? Where did my chat window go? We got, we got a couple things going here. Okay, so this is the base. Which wait, we can see the base. You went totally black. Hold oh, on, I'm opening the base. Hey, we got a super chat from Just Paint It. Woohoo! First one. Look Thank you, Jerry. You're the best. Look at that. Autograph. Wait, hold on. Let me get right over there. There we go. Thank you, Big Daddy Dave Horvath. All right, what are they going to win? How are they going to do it? Look, I'm still opening shit. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So he sends a little frame. Right. Inside <laughs> the frame. Ron Joseph there's, said this nut thinks he's a vampire. There's That's an cool. envelope with probably some sealed goodies that go in the frame. Yes. You might get. So I'm not going to open that. Yeah, don't do that. How are we going to win this? Well, send a check or money order to Scott <laughs> Johansson. <laughs> um, and you're going to, yeah, it comes with, I have a feeling it comes with that little mini, uh, mini cold check. Yes. Yeah. Comes with everything. How about... <laughs> just paint it said that's that's jerry with that five dollars says please get scott a new camera <laughs> i've been saying that for months that's next on the list or, yep all right all right how they win it i know i got it okay um bill wilson even though we pick on you, give us a $20 super chat. Thank you, Bill. Even though yeah. you pick on me. Great. Yeah. You know what? Say Everybody yeah. save those super chats for if you want to get your question answered because, later on. Yeah, because Bill doesn't ask for it at all. <laughs> um, Bill, thank you so much. Jerry, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, here we go. Uh... <laughs> we don't pick on Bill. Well, well we do. But he... he... Yeah. Well, I, I get picked on just as much. Okay, we yeah. got to give it away, Scott. Let's go. This is the magic I'm of I'm working editing. on my question. Give me a minute. <laughs> All right, while you're doing that, let's look at the other things. Jerk store. All right, we got Buffalo Girls. 
which turned out, I think, the best he could have asked for for this. Because then I think when he first started, it was a it's a lot to do for a two figure kit. Your third thing out, you got stuff coming, and it looks really cool for those fans of this movie. Fans of the movie. And there's a Kolchak kit as well. We'll talk about that in a second. All right, Scott, you got your question yet? Yes. I have my question. Here we go for the Kolchak giveaway. All right. For the Kolchak giveaway. The first one that can give me the correct number of children that David and his wife have. Oh, my God. Win this kit. Okay. All right. How many kids does Dave, Big Daddy Dave Horvath have? You get the Kolchak plus. All right. I'll be looking for it in chat. Someone, first one to instant message him. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> figure Kick Garage, send us some money too. Woohoo! Thank you, Figure Kick Garage. Russell Clark, no. Trevor, no. Just paint, Just paint it. it. No. Steve Schultz, no. Here we go. Zippy, Zippy no. Uh, almost spike. <laughs> yeah, Scotty Mills. He's not. Brian Clark um, said six. No. Man. I think people just start going down the list. What number oh, has that... not been said yet? <laughs> three, zero. Zero is a trick question. No. That's three. No. There's an eight in there. One. Eight is it? Just paint it. Just, just paint, paint it. it. Just paint it. There eight is correct. Eight. All right, Jerry. Excellent. Eight. I hope I'm right, but eight was what I was counting. So <laughs> on this one picture. So if it's not eight, I'm going with it. All right. Congrats, Jerry. Jerry. Awesome. So, uh, yep. Okay. Eight. All right. So do you have a Buffalo Girls box over there? I, I do. Okay. So, so we got that to open as well. Uh, I have another cold check. I'm not. Let me put the pictures up. I have this one to give away, which is the seated one. And I'm not going to unwrap it because everything's wrapped so well. And it has a ton of David's. Dude, thank you, Vlad. You're the best. Thank you, Vlad. And thank you for coming on today. And it has, let me show you what it, oh, I don't want to unwrap it. Let me get to me. It has a little, it has the print, has everything in there. The bust, all that stuff, great stuff. Or not the bust. This is the full figure kit that I'm giving up. And this one. First person to say. What other movie is Mr. Kolchak in that everybody watches at Christmas? Oh, geez. First person okay. to say it. First person. This is fast typers. Fast typer competition. Fast typers competition. <laughs> gets, gets the. Uh, oops. Gets the uh, city seated coal check. What Christmas movie was he in? Come on. Who's the fastest typer? Boggy Creek. Yes. Thank you, sir. Christmas story. Figure Kick Garage gets it. Bam. He was the first person in there. Figure Kick Garage gets the. Wait. Seated. Didn't he just win the last one? Wait. Didn't you? No. That was Jerry. That is, isn't Jerry figure kid garage? No, Jerry's just painted. Come on. Oh, oh that's Brent I Krug. Did. Come on. Dude. Oh, that's Krug. Okay. There you go. All, All right. right. Hold check. Seated. All right. And the last, show us the Buffalo Girls so we can right, move on. So I'm not going to show you the base because the base is wrapped so well. But yeah. these are the figures. And this is the uh, Donna Reed. I'm not even going to unpack this beautiful. Thing too much. This is the uh, the uh, James Stewart here. We have a not enough of cameras going to pick this up. It's not. not. <laughs> but there's little hairs right on on Jimmy's forehead right there. Yeah, I'll, you can see it in the other picture. Anyway, this is a scale. Now this was a prototype. So what that means is it's going to need a little more work than the ones that he is producing. But he wanted to get one out to us for the giveaway. So it's going to leave me a little puttying and sanding. Um, but uh, it does have all the extras in here. There's a little. Every time an angel. 
Every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. All right. So, so uh, how are we going to give that one away? This is a tough one. So we just, someone else answered Christmas story a long time ago. It was Brent Krug. He won. Jerry Fraid won the other one. We got this one. So people in chat clear for the next giveaway here, and then we're going to move on. Okay. What was the 1939 film that Uncle Billy from It's a Wonderful Life also played a major role in? Oh, my God. Here we go. So let's see who can get it. So it repeat the question again. What major 1939 Academy Award winning film did Uncle Billy, the gentleman who played Uncle Billy, also have a part in? I, I have no idea. Have I seen this movie? I'm sure you've heard of it. If you haven't seen it, I'm sure you've heard of it. Okay. All right. Maybe there's there's not a Wizard uh, of Oz. Nope. 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 That's a good guess, though. It is. Let's see what else is there? Come there's on. There's a correlation man. between that movie and this one. Gone That's with right. the wind. Thomas Fairful. Gone Thomas with the wind. Got it. Thomas. All right. Tell us what it is. So uh, Gone he with played the wind. Charlotte O'Hare's father. In Gone with the Wind. And uh, he also played Uncle Billy. Cool. All right. So, and I want everyone to know, this is Tony Cipriano's favorite movie. Okay. Um, he loves to talk about this movie. So if you ever want to get on Tony's good side, <laughs> send him a message about this movie and how much you love it. Okay. So. And <laughs> it's not a Christmas movie, but we'll talk about that another time. Um, no, don't. Here we go. <laughs> All so right. thank you big daddy dave oh yes um everybody that won send jason your address and we'll get these out to you um this week and uh get it going yeah definitely all right moving on moving right along we have we got that we got this all right now everyone knows why we edit like seriously <laughs> this is how, we should do this one th once now that i know to push the right button From Escape Hatch Hobbies. Go over here to this. Escape Hatch. Hot uh, I'm going to read while these are up here. Uh, hi, Jason. Hi, Scott. Couple new things from Escape Hatch for our Model Club TV if you have time. Dracula bust is available in full giant Aurora scale, uh, quarter scale, and as a mini bust. So check that out over there. Latest in the series sculpted by Michael Berglund and, is, uh, and this one is painted by Jeff Brown. I don't know. I didn't get those pictures. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to go find it. Only two more busts remain to finish the series. We hope to have them all on the mar market by next fall. Uh, the replacement parts are available for the Monarch Moon Suit, which is the pictures I have here. Once again, we got a head start on these thanks to Michael Berglund, Berglund's position as Monarch Sculptor. Uh, these were produced as part of Escape Hatch's new coordination with Walter Pizzali of Futuristic Robots whose digital files were the basis of this monarch kit so let's go back so you get like a uh some sort of sound generator part thing geiger counter something you get a fuel pack or a jet pack maybe that looks like and a rake <laughs> shovel thing so, so are these three different kits available or yeah are these they... are yeah so they're three different however you want to do it yeah i think so to go back and look but these are the pictures i got uh check them out over at escapehatchhobbies.com todd's a great guy always sending us good stuff so and again thank you for sending them in so that we could show them some really cool things and let me move ahead leave those up there do you have this kit did you buy it? you got oh yeah you did you showed it that one time you got yeah. it from Berglund. i got one because i'm special yeah you are special that's for sure let me get rid of these all right up next you were special you'd have eight kids too <laughs> if your mom was younger she'd have about 15 by now oh i was waiting when the first mom joke would come in there well, that should be the time not. stamp what is it 55 minutes in that's the longest time it took for a mom joke ever all right up from well winner what do we got well winner um but hold on i wasn't prepared yet okay hold on <laughs> oh man Live streaming. Fun. 
Good times. Um, get off my ass. <laughs> is Hokey Wolf. That's why I thought it was Hokey Wolf. Okay. Hokey Wolf and Dingaling. All right. And um, this is the newest, and it's a little Hanna Barbera. Mary, he oh. is very special. I'm sorry you have to put up with him on holiday. That's my oh god! I got to spend all day with her tomorrow. Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mom joke drink. That's a good, good game. Good game. So um, anyway, that's Hokey Wolf and Dingling. Another uh, well okay. special. Up next. And then up next. Oh, I didn't is... move these over. Shazam. Shazam. Also known as Captain Marvel. Little stylized well piece. He's been busy this month. And a car. Oops. And then a car. This is the Antil Mobs. Uh, what the hell is the name of the car? I don't believe I don't know the name of the car. I do know the name of the car, but I don't. can't think of it off the top of my head. I'm disappointed. Um, I am too. <laughs> it, it's the. Uh, I, it, yeah, it, it's the pressure. We're moving yeah. on. <laughs> chug, chug a boom. Oh, bullshit. Bullshit. We're moving on. Is it chug a boom? I'll tell you in a god darn minute. Hold Russell on. Clark chatted chug a boom. What's that? You might be ready. No, the bulletproof bomb. Also, the roaring plenty. Okay. So there you go. And then the chug a bug was the Arkansas chug a bug. So, um, yeah. So there. Okay. okay. And Zorak? Zorak. To go with the Brack that he put out not too long ago. And did you uh, are you a big Space Ghost person? Did you watch a lot of Space Ghosts? I watch Space Ghost, but I don't I remember like this character from when they did the Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Yeah, that's like, all I remember too. <laughs> I don't, I don't I remember, remember him actually being on Space Ghost, but I haven't seen the actual Space Ghost cartoons in so long. Yeah. So, so great stuff I, from I, always from Well. Yeah. Someone out there can probably tell us if these were actual um, villains from the original Space Ghost or not. Um, I think they are. Yeah, they are. Uh, and then we just got this in uh, the Jaeger beat, Scott. What did you get from the Worthlings? The Jaeger beat today. Well, you know, I want to thank Mark Worthling for, you know, sending this in on time. And uh, as <laughs> always, um, you know, timely. What about 15 minutes before the show? Yes. Tracy Wilson, thank you. This is <laughs> she the... said. Here's more money because you pick on Bill. <laughs> hey, oh, Tracy, you pay. Tracy, you keep paying. We'll keep picking. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so this is um, the latest in the Mark Brokaw um, Big Head series. Yeah, and it will debut at Wonderfest. Price is undetermined at this point, but this is uh, sculpted by Jeff Yeager, of course. And this is the Bride of Frankenstein. I also, really like the likeness on this. I really like the base, how the table is the like holding it that mm -hmm. she was. And when you when you because I was out, I didn't see pictures of this until just now before when Mark sent it to me because I was out of town. Um, when did Mark send it to you again? Uh, about five minutes before he sent them to you, and I said, "Hey, it's Scott." Was beat. Mark supposed to send those? <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. okay. that's what I told him. I didn't touch. I said, "Hey, you got to send this to Scott." Uh, my fear of this kit being one, one scale, what, or larger, cause is it one, one? It's less than, it's a big head. So what is it? One. They're yeah. They're pretty close. They say they're not one, one, but they're pretty close. They're close. They're a little smaller, but they're close. My fear with this kit is the hair. And cause when you have a one, one scale, I, that's the most iconic part to me of the bride of Frankenstein is the hair. And when you get into a larger scale on that, the hair is going to look weird because it's not real hair. And I think it was handled very well on this and it looks much better than I thought it might've turned out. So well done, Jeff Yeager on the hair. I really, really like the hair. And that was a worry. Of yeah. Cause Jason thought he was going to have to cut his beard, let it grow again, <laughs> cut it again, and then paste it onto her and dye it. <laughs> well, that's what you'd almost, for me, you'd almost have to do that. Get a wig, stick it on there, spray it, do all that kind of stuff. But it, I think it turned out really, really good. Yeah, figure Brent says figure uh big heads might be half scale. I th George George Stevenson's watching, he says three quarter scale. And I think that's probably about George Steve. So 
as long as George Stevenson's watching, let's make mention real quick is I believe George maybe still has some openings for his Wonderfest class. George, um, is that true? Ch- type in and, chat. And out there, George, give us some give us an update. Um and it's a curse of the werewolf bust. Yeah, we'll see. wait and see. We're gonna, see, see. We're gonna see if George is paying attention here. We're in a little delay, so we'll <laughs> he probably see. just bailed on us. But anyway, um, but so I, I brought up uh, George last week because when I was at Adepticon, I didn't see George. It was just uh, Ken from Badger. So George, why weren't you there? George. Yeah, he said yes to the class. Yes. So there you go. Okay, that's because George is hiding from you. That's true. <laughs> George doesn't like you. Okay, that doesn't surprise me. Who can blame him? I don't like you either. I don't like you most times. I'm just kidding. Myself. George loves Jason. Um, and Jason loves George. He said there are three spots available for his class. So Three spots available. There you go. Once okay. I get everything updated, I'll put a link down here. But everybody, right now, if you're interested, there's only three spots left in George's class. Head over there and sign up so you don't miss out. Uh, that's awesome. Okay. Uh, up next, let me get there. Dun, dun. Oh, no. I, I have a couple other pictures while we do that. So again, here's a close up on the like just her face. And I like it's beautiful. It's perfect. And yeah, I love that base. There's the base by itself. And again, you know it's cast by Brokaw, so it's gonna be beautiful. Yeah. All right. These well done. Folks are getting a commercial again. Oh, uh, they're getting a commercial? Yeah. Can pause for a minute. George said he loves us. George is being nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> oh man that's funny we gotta have george on again george is always a good interview and george is uh yeah we'll have him back always up. willing to come on too all right uh in terms of new kits that i got uh in person uh thanks to neil DeConte, your doppelganger i got neil is my doppelganger the Halloween Nightmare from Garage Kits US. He was he's thinning down his collection, and I figured it was time to finally pull the trigger. And I am safe, happy to say, that it made it here without a finger breaking. So, I did get a Halloween Nightmare that I've wanted for a while. And this thing, Fuck monster, is that's a great. Oh, it's beautiful. It's my favorite great. one. And the the kid wearing the creature from the Black Lagoon costume. I had that costume as a kid, and that's kind of why I wanted this one. Is that's just so I picked that up. Now, watch me drop it and break those fingers. I would laugh. I would laugh. Look at that, George is ready. He says, "Have me on." Lots to chat about. All right, cool. Yeah, you know what? Next episode, let's do that. Next episode, George, we'll we'll talk. We'll get you on. Cool. You're, you're uh, committed. Okay. Someone said something about Sasquatches. Brian Clark, George loves Sasquatches. I should know. <laughs> so, but thank you, Neil, and thank you, Garage Kid, for making it. All right, I want to talk about Adepticon. That was one of the reasons. Wait, I got something. So oh, you got it. Oh, it's all about you. You never okay. said you had something to show. You're an asshole. All right, I picked this up, and it's a Ravel Germany kit. It's available at Cult TV Man site. Um, I actually bought mine off of eBay because um, someone turned me on to a great price on eBay, but um. It's a snap together kit. I haven't even opened it yet, but it's the Aston Martin from Goldfinger. Nice. DB5. And there's already resin upgrades for it and stuff. So I haven't cracked it open yet because I've been busy, but I'm going to. All right. I got to do something on the fly here, real quick. Keep talking. I'm still talking. So the reason, let me make this bigger. The reason we're doing it live is last weekend, oh, exactly a week ago today, I was at Adepticon. And for those of you who have no idea what a oh move come on, for those of you who have no idea what Adepticon is, it's a mini wargaming convention, and it I'll have to leave it there like that. Uh, it's held in Schaumburg, which is close to me. It's an hour north of us. Actually, I got there in forty minutes when I left. You took three fifty-five. No, I didn't. I took two ninety-four, really? but I left at five in the morning, five thirty, six o'clock in the morning. Because parking over there is a nightmare. But it's a mini war gaming convention, one of the biggest in the United States. And it is a great place to pick up paints and brushes and supplies for any kind of modeling. Uh, AK Interactive is there. Uh, 
Monument Hobbies is there. Like all the major paint companies are there. War mini war game or uh, war game. What is it? Army painters there. All the paint companies big ones badger's yep. there badger was there which i got your scott wanted me to pick up i have it sitting here i'll probably drop it off tomorrow i have your style Renz primer you that i got for you and i put some up for myself but uh, i want to show you some pictures just a couple things and while i'm talking about it uh it is let me you'll get to see our notes here for a second um get over there adepticon <laughs> Back. Sound back. There we go. Sound is back. So this is Adepticon. Here's a. Last year I did a walkthrough video. This year I don't think I'm going to. I'm just going to kind of talk about it here. Um, there is so much at this show for anybody who's into modeling, and the cool thing about it is if you're just going to go walk through the dealers area, it's free to get into. So you, the only reason you have to get a badge is if you want to pick up a swag bag that comes with the badge or if you want to uh take any of the classes or any enter any of the tournaments but if you want to just go look at the models and and the contests and buy stuff it's totally free to get into so it's it runs from wednesday i want to say you can get in there i think they set up wednesday night or wednesday but it's thursday friday saturday sunday you can get in there and look at stuff and buy things and it's just it's overwhelming with how much stuff is in there and even if you're not into minis, it's, I, I highly recommend checking it out at least once, especially if you're in the area, if you're in the Chicago area, it's well worth the trip. It is not something that, like, unless you're like really into it, I wouldn't drive if you're just a garage kit guy or fly in, but it's, you can take classes with some of the best painters in the world, but you need to. And what happened to me this year is I did not get up in time and they go like that for the sign up sheet. And the other thing that goes really fast are the swag bags. So you can you can buy different tier levels to get in to get your badge. And there is a ton of stuff in that bag. So I just wanted to show real fast. Let me get over to this team here. I bet you were disappointed because you thought it was a drag bag and you were gonna get a dress <laughs> and a pretty So I got this bag of stuff when I walked in and picked up my badge. The first thing that I I got was I got a full on tank game. I have it. It's called Clash of Steel, American versus Soviet, like just actual game with a bunch of tanks. So I got that with my bag. But some of the other cooler stuff, and I'm not going to go through all of it. I got, and I just saw this. So there's a $50 price on this. It's for the Star Wars game, and it's got the Ewoks and Princess Leia figures for that game. And. I got a full on combat patrol. That's like a, at least $140 worth of miniatures from games workshop. Um, got a bunch of other, like just little things from different companies to try out different minis, different stuff in that swag bag. Great stuff. Well worth the time. Some of the other things I picked up though. Uh, I wanted to mention this and it's from, what, what do you pay for that swag bag? I think it was like, t they just changed it. There used to be, there was like three, there was two tiers. There was very important gamer bag, and then there was a bag that was. Let me pull up the chat. I lost it again. Um, it was, I think, almost three hundred. But in the end, it does. You get more stuff than what you actually pay for it. Um. So this is one of the things I picked up, and it's from a company called Fat Mat. I think what it is is it Fat Mat. Yeah. Is that the company? I'll look it up, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but it's, the thing is called Macro Mats, and it's a photo studio. And the mats that come with it are there's a blue gradient, like just blue gradient like that. And then there's like a warm background with some texture and a cool background texture. And I've wanted something for a while that's just really quick, easy to set up to take little pictures of things. And it's, I'll put a link to all this stuff up later. But... And it's just got like a little T that you clip those things on. Because normally I have a light tent that I set up and do all that stuff. I just wanted something quick and fast. Does uh, so, Monument Hobbies have a signature series for many garage kit painters? They have a bunch of signature series. For many garage kit guys? Not doing... for garage kit, oh. but I use the ones. No, nothing from a garage kit, guys. The ones that just came out were for a specific game. One was for Rogue Hobbies which is uh, Louise over on YouTube. Follow her. She's amazing. 
Uh, and she's like her set was a lot of brighter colors. Most of the signature series are from all of them are from miniature painters, but that's one of the things I did buy. So I had an old Monument Hobbies set, and it was the smaller bottles. They upgraded their bottles to the bigger ones, so I just went and finally rebuilt, and I'm bringing those paints to school for the kids to work on. Um, the other thing here are some pictures. Here's a dragon and some of the other dioramas. The bad thing about taking pictures there, Monument Hobbies paints are fantastic, Jerry just said, um, and I agree with them completely. They're so good. Um, there is so much eye candy at this show, but the bad thing is taking pictures, everything's behind glass. So you get a reflection from every light in there. You have to be like right up on it. So, but there was just, the work was amazing on every level. And I want to just kind of coast through some of these great stuff. Uh, look at that Mando Mandalorian figure. Beautiful. Uh, Darth Vader. These stormtroopers were great. Um, this is from that, um, crisis protocol game, I think, uh, for Marvel where they have all the Marvel figures. So there's a separate contest for them, for that company. And there's like this lizard Spider-Man diorama. Was, there was a few Spider-Man dioramas. This rhino was fantastic. This toad was one of my favorite though, in that contest, the lighting on it. My picture does it no justice. You had to see this in person. And a lot of the guys will do like the, the backdrop painted as well. So you have like this alleyway for Toad painted behind him. Uh, here's the Guardians of the Galaxy and some Hell's Kitchen enemies and bad guys. And then on to Golden Demon. I highly, please, everybody at some point today, go look up the Golden Demon entries from 2024. Absolutely blown away by some of the stuff in there. And this tank right off the, and a lot of people aren't into tanks like when it comes to yeah, the OSL is like some of the guys with the OSL, the ob object source lighting is just nuts. But there were some great tanks this year. And a lot of guys, I think, are so mini focused that they look past some of the tanks and things. But holy crap, some of this stuff is so good. This dinosaur, I there's no way I could show it in here. There's a way I think it, they posted this somewhere. Games Workshop did. The texture on the scales on this, I was trying to get closer on this so people could see it. I just couldn't. But the way that they did the backdrop, it's this forced perspective thing that's amazing. Um, some other really cool stuff. The picture here in the middle with the vampire, I'm still waiting to figure out how he did it. This is the one that won the Slayer Sword, was like the grand champion. He either scanned or sculpted an exact flipped copy of the miniature and then flipped it underneath. Go, this is online everywhere. Go and look at it, and you can see that he just like flipped it, so it looked like a reflection, and it's just absolutely nuts what he did with it. Uh, this, this was one of my favorite pieces, and there's no way it's ever going to win, because Games Workshop kind of has an aversion, I think, to... I don't even know how to... It's too funny for them. <laughs> it's not serious enough. So if anyone can, and I, it's hard to even show on here because you have to look at it up close. But for those of you who know what this is, I think you have to be my age. There is a space Marine. I'm going to see. I think you can see my mouse in the picture. There's a space Marine right here in this part of the picture doing an uppercut on an orc while all these people in the background are watching them fight. It's basically a 40K Street Fighter game. How you have your two figures, like the in from the video game where they're fighting. And in the background, there's always people like moving and stuff. So they basically took like the video game and turned it into a little diorama using 40K things. And it like most people walk by, I think, don't even realize what it was. And I was like, oh my God, it's Street Fighter. And it's so cool. And you have to like see it in person to really appreciate it. And then some of the other things. There's one other video I'm going to play while we're going, but nah, I'll skip that. Some really cool stuff from Adepticon. Please go look up anywhere on Instagram or, or Facebook. Just type in Adepticon or, or Golden Demon 2024, and you'll see some amazing stuff. That I, I wish there was a better way to get pictures, so you kind of have to wait till the official pictures come out. Um, great stuff. Really, really good stuff over there. And I just wish there was still a way to get the more of our guys into their hobby more of their guys into our I hobby know. And i know because it's 
it's and and again, and, George and the Stevenson other... is about the only guy so far that's looked at it and said, "I am going to play this actor." Hey, but... this is this is where we should, you know, this is where we should branch out into. <laughs> I want everyone to see this. This video that's playing now is just one room of people playing games. There are multiple rooms like this. It's not because what our biggest reference point is chiller in Wonderfest. And they pale in comparison to the amount of people that are at this show. And there's like the and it's something I want to try and figure out a way to do at Wonderfest is have something like this where people just get together and paint. Because there's just people set up ta- tables and just paint with each other and build kits and hang out and talk and get together and do that sort of thing. This is just one room in the show and it's insane. And all day long, there's people just playing games. There's people painting in a corner. There's people live streaming their painting. While Peleus is there doing his live stream in the whole time. And it's just, I want this for us somehow. And if there's a way we could get together to do like model club, everyone hang out and paint and talk. And the paint companies set up paint racks with free paints to use to test out different brands. And it's just amazing to see everyone get together and do this sort of thing. Uh, Boggy Creek, did you see Goblin's Hut is working on a blood paint? Yes. So I did get to talk to Mark from Goblin's Hut for a second. He sold out. So what happened was he had said that the gore paint was going to be there. And it was. But he had to fill bottles himself using a hazmat suit like right before. And he only ended up, I think, with like maybe 40 bottles and the gore paint sold out before the show even started. So there it will be coming boggy and it looks really cool. The stuff that he, that I saw done with it and man, Mark's a great guy again. Oh, if you need some dirty down paint model club TV promo code MCTV, get some money off that stuff. But well, we might have him back on too to talk about the gore paint. Uh, I, it was good I'm to watching see him. this video here. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of things that I notice, and and man, maybe with the remodel, this gets better. One thing that's always been terrible at Wonderfest in the dealers' room, in the contest room, is the lighting. It's awful. And when I'm looking at this room, I'm looking at how bright this room is when you're walking through there. Um, and it's like, I hope they improve the lighting at Wonderfest. I, because- so I will talk about, I can talk about lighting. Yes. The lighting in these rooms are great. The lighting in most of the hobby cases where the contests are, are great. Golden demon is actually upstairs in front of all of these windows with natural lighting. So they're actually in glass cases, uh, which makes it even harder to take pictures of them during the day. Like you just, you can't, it just doesn't work, but it's, I agree. There has to be an upgrade to those lights at Wonderfest. And then let me uh, get back to us. We um, are ready to do voicemails, emails, and corrections. And then we're going to do our Ask Us Anything segment. We are way behind. <laughs> Again, I'm. Okay. So I'm going to mute right. my mic. But so you can you listen. Because I want to listen to these as you go. Okay. Mm-hmm. So up first, we have some old time radio guy calling in. And here we go. Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. America, and all the ships at sea. This is Walter Winchell with a special broadcast. A stunning revelation has rocked the longtime popular CBS radio show, Model Club TV. The two co-hosts, Jason Walker and Scott Johansson of Chicago. On Tuesday, the New York Daily News carried a front-page story accusing Johansson of carrying on a long-time illicit intergenerational love affair with Walker's mother. Both hosts have steadfastly refused all requests for comment, further fueling speculation that, like the named Mrs. Walker, this story has got legs. Fans of the program are expected to flock to their radios for the next broadcast on Tuesday evening, which is expected to break all previous Hooper ratings for the show, as America waits to hear what comment Walker will make on the whole sordid affair and whether Johansson will make an appearance or, as many expect, will have ducked 
out of sight. Tune in to my next broadcast for an update on the shocking story. This is Walter Winchell. Over and out. That was pretty good. That's got to be Vlad. That's got to be Vlad. That's got to be. Got to be. But hey, thanks. That's, do more of that. I want more of those. Old timey radio guy. That's, I like that. Do that. I want that guy calling in more. That's pretty funny. All right. The only thing that's got legs is Jason's mom. She wraps them around me pretty good. So, okay. Drink. Everybody take a drink. There you go. Take a drink. <laughs> Can we talk about the mom jokes for a second? So, oh they don't bother me. And I. I've people have made passing comments to me in the past or why like why doesn't it bother me? I like a good joke. And I can and I know it's all done in fun. So those people that are watching for the first time, it's all in good fun. Scott's getting back at me for talking about his dead mom. And that's fine. <laughs> Which again is is to me a good joke is a good joke. But I have an old saying and it is don't pitch if you can't catch. Okay. So Jason threw a fastball down the middle of the plate. And I'm catching. Professional, I'm catching. And I am now smacking him out of the park as quick as he can throw. And, and I love it. Again, I love a good joke. I especially love a good mom joke. And I know that Scott is very quick on the mom joke trigger. <laughs> I think that's totally okay. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty quick on mom's trigger too. But, All right. Uh, Drink again. What is that? Like four or five drinks right there. <laughs> People are going to be waiting. Uh, we have Allison AI calling in. This is Allison AI for Jason Walker of YouTube. Your new password has been changed to black doesn't make Jason a goth makes him not a goth. Point two. Goodbye. Okay. And then we have an employee from a company that sounds an awful lot like Allison A.I. Hello, Mr. Jason Walker. This is Acorn Stairlift to remind you that we have a delivery for your Acorn Stairlift in your dank, dark basement where a goblin sits on the stairs and you fell and broke your neck. Well, not your neck. You're not your head. Because you're dealing with bad things, Mr. Walker. Now you have to be coated down in an acorn stairlift into your basement. Goodbye. Is acorn stairlift an actual thing? <laughs> Is that the, like the thing in Gremlins that shot the lady out the window? Is that okay? All right. And then we have one last one here. I'm ignoring you, starting now. Someone is now ignoring us, so okay. Those are our voicemails this episode. Emails. Do we have any corrections, Scott? What? I don't know. But I had to ask who's catching. Uh, Jason's mom's catching. Let me tell you. Catching hell. You're catching. All right. Never mind. Oh, someone asked, is Mary uh, on here, the Mrs. Walker? No, Mary's my sister-in-law. I wouldn't <laughs> touch her with a 10-foot pole, okay? So, uh, anyway, all right, go ahead. Oh, I okay. Heavy Metal Spike said it. And I, I'm i pretty sure we figured out our uh, Joker, and I'm pretty sure we figured out our Tucky. Okay. So, look in chat. I think that's, I think we figured it out last episode. All right, email from Kendall Conniff. Besides my pet peeve about painting fire correctly, I have developed a couple new ones. First, why do skulls and kits always have perfect teeth? Is there an orthodontist to the skulls? Second, this is more of a people thing. Why do people post pictures of their really cool, almost finished kit and never post the finished kit? I want to see the finished kit, damn it. Is it just me? Peeve rant over. That is all, Kendall. I have noticed that about skulls. That everyone always does them perfect, and they always paint them white, which they're never going to be white like that, unless they've been bleached. If it's a skull hanging out in a dungeon somewhere, it's going to have that like kind of icky brown look to it, I would think. Scott, how about you? 
I, I'm with you. I get the teeth thing too. But there's things you could do to that if you wanted. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do get it. And again, I, it all harkens back to the Aurora kits, I think. You know, that when they had skulls on anything, they, they had perfect, you know. I, you're lucky they look like skulls. I did 3D, pr I found these as a file. And the teeth are missing. There was like a missing tooth in there. So it was kind of cool. Uh, as far as the missing, the pictures. Ah, Bill Wilson says, because he never finishes his kits. That's probably why you never see those pictures is people don't finish them. And That's because Bill doesn't understand it. <laughs> Eyebrows go on the kits. And then we have this from Chuck Homolka, who I sends in good stuff that he finds. Uh, these are two-sided cast resin. Let me get the picture up. There it is. Uh, two-sided cast resin painting panel available in two variants, organic and industrial. Each me measures 75 millimeters square. This organic variant has six heads repeated across the panel, uh, allowing for multiple practices and visual improvements. Two of each head is enlarged for additional practice opportunities. The reverse has a series of nine panels with common surfaces found on miniatures. Mutated flesh, fur, chainmail, lizard, dragon skin, and one panel with a base texture. So if you really, this is a great idea. And I think this is something that even 3D printing, you can just print a bunch of the same thing and just practice. And so this is great for learning how to dry brush or trying out a color scheme. Uh, these are available over at, let me, I have the link here. Put it. Oop, I ask us anything is next. This is from T.O. Modelmaker.com. I think it is T.O. Taro, not T.O. I'm thinking of that 3D sculptor. Taro Modelmaker.com. I'll have a link for that as well. But I think this is a great idea. So just want to, without ruining a model like you always were afraid to, the little panel, just practice doing stuff and working out that way. So thanks, Chuck, for sending that in. All right, Scott, are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. We'll go as long as you want until questions stop. We're not that long, but we are doing Ask Us Anything. So, and I mean pretty much anything. <laughs> there might be some talk. As, we're going to stay away from religion, stay away from politics. Although, well, for those of you celebrating Easter tomorrow, happy Easter. Um, Scott's having turkey for some reason, which is strange. Careful. Joanne's sister's on here. It's ham. You should be having ham. Actually, she does. Joanne's sister is a uh, vegetarian. She does not eat oh, meat. Okay. So she'll be having tofu something or another. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Our first question. Our first question. From Heavy Metal Spike. Question for Jason. What is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? 42 is the answer. And it's kind of, yeah, everybody hit that like button if you can. Um, again, any other questions? Free game. Just no, nothing that's yeah, going to get us in Jason, trouble. Jason, answer to life is argue with everybody. That, okay. Even when he's wrong. Okay. Oh, we're going to go there. <laughs> Same. When am I wrong? Uh, regular gold bond or extra strength? That is a good question. It is regular gold bond. I've been having a problem with the gold bond. I think they're discontinued. Oh, it's not making your nuts no. sparkle anymore. No. What? I Jeez. think I think they are discontinuing the travel size bottles. Cuz normally they used to be in the little baskets at Target and they had a little red cap. Now it's a little bottle with a yellow gold cap and I could only find it at Walgreens. And it was on a on a discontinued shelf. It's probably used. That's I right. know. So, uh, yeah, it is regular gold bond, not the blue foot powder one. I'm talking the regular gold bond. Nutsack bond. Nut bond. <laughs> All right. What do you got, blimp balls that you got to put powdered sugar on? No, I just, I don't understand. Oh, the other thing I'm going to recommend is they now make underwear with a nut pouch. Yeah, it's to called keep, a bowling bag. <laughs> keep okay? you from chafing. It is great for convention walking. Gold bond, nut pouch, good to go. All right. Here we got some actual questions. All right, we do have some actual questions. Uh, how's the Mask of the Red Death coming along? Uh, it is not. It is still sitting there primed. I just moved the stairs over there. I am 
I think I start, I just saved another picture. I think I'm confident on how I'm going to paint it. It is coming along. It's the next thing that's being painted. It is, I just moved parts that were about uh, to get painted. Favorite rattle can primer? Favorite rattle can primer? Lately, I have been using the primer for 3D, for FDM. I've been using the, what is it? What's the company? Uh, Harbor Freight. They're generic primer because it's cheaper. But mm -hmm. my favorite rattle can, just regular, Tamiya and Mr. Surface. Cause those are like, if you want a nice, like perfectly smooth primer, the Tamiya, I think, is the best. Uh, I also use, I love Games Workshop Black, the Chaos Black Spray as a base. I'll usually prime first and then use their Rattle Can Chaos Black. Yeah, me too. What's your favorite um, primer, Scott? Uh, the badger that you have for me right over there. And I'm, I'm stuck. I can't build anything until you bring it over. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Which kit do you think is the most rare and holiest of grail? That's a well, good see, question. An interesting question. So obviously rare. I think we talked about it earlier in the episode. Okay. That Godzilla's go-kart. That Aurora Godzilla's go-kart. I mean... I don't think you get much rarer and or. Um, and other people, if you want to put your answer in the chat too, that'd be yeah. cool. Now, I, Grail, everybody's Grail is different. And frankly, I think. Honestly. As far as like the holiest of Grails, I pretty much have every grail kit i wanted someone just sent this and was gonna say we should talk about this what is your grail right now scott what is something and for me a grail kit is one like there's one thing you, you you're looking for there's an old james bond bust that was sculpted by um <laughs> works for weta okay and uh crap why is that escape who put it out? He did, and that's the one he sent to Kit Builders and Modeler's Resource. And Somebody knows. Really... Throw it in the chat. Throw it in the chat. Anyways, it's Sean Connery, James Bond bust that I wouldn't mind having. It's really nice. Other than that, there's really not much. Like, when I'm looking for things, if I see something and it strikes me, I go, that's really cool, then I'll buy it. Yeah. I think my grail, current grail, that I really, I just, and one came up for sale recently, and I just, couldn't pay for it i didn't and that's a vampu from future i really want one of those i've always wanted one of those and i've never managed to snag one i've had some other future kits that i've sold that i should have never sold that i'm really mad about like the fat frog robot i should have never sold that there's that other zaram kit like that final form zaram people will know what i'm talking about where it's like the the creature crawling on the ground but i really want a vampu that's my one that's my grail. I want a vampoo. Heavy Metal Spike wants to know when you're going to sell him the Goonies sloth buildup. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Actually, I need a car. <laughs> I don't think he's going to pay that much. Yeah, no, I, yeah. No, it wouldn't even be close to that much. Uh, let me think about that, actually. Have either of you gotten on the list for the new Tony McVeigh bust? I have not. Um... I think it's cool they got Tony to do something. Yeah, that's very cool. And I just, um, I have not, you know, again, I've become more selective. Um, what is but, it? I don't even, I can't even, what is it? I'm trying to remember. You know, I am too. Again. What is it, Brent? I, 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 I remember them announcing me. it, but I don't remember what it is right now. Okay. Um, Jason, did you catch anything down in Florida off that pier? Oh. <sighs> Yeah, VD. So, um, <laughs> so for those of you, man, I should put that picture here. Let me find it. Let me see if I can find it. Um, that's a great picture. So did you catch anything? Um, no, I didn't. And I'm... I was at the mercy of two women. Three... Ch no, three women. Three children, one being a toddler, one being first grade, 
and another guy was fishing with me. So I probably only got to fish for like 40 minutes. And that pier, so I was in, in Navarre, Florida, which where Jaws 2 was filmed, we found out at our hotel, like right there. And there's a, like the 15th longest pier in the United States is right off that beach. And so you can rent poles and I, I love fishing. So I did not catch anything. I did get some strikes, wasn't able to set the hook. I didn't have my pole with me. So it was, it was weird trying to set up, but the guy down the pier caught a giant like redfish right before, like as we were there. Um, I wish I caught your, mom, your mom's got my pole. <laughs> Drink. All right. Um, favorite. Where are we at? I marry uh, my sister and her in law, Mary. Dude wipes. Are they that good? Well, let's talk about your dude no. wipes. Dude wipes are way too expensive for what they are. Just go to Costco and buy the, <laughs> the box of Costco wipes. Do not flush them down your toilet because they jam it up. Learn so, what do you experience. do with your ass wipes that you They got to go in the garbage and you got to keep throwing them out. You wait, you use the, the wet wipe as a finisher. because they gum up the works do not flush those even though it says flushable it is not true do not use that they're flushable but they're not digestible they they do not basically um i a question for you you know on all these you know you seem to have a lot of problems down in that area yeah i do um (laughs) did you ever think of a bidet i thought about it i have because yeah, my wife swears by her, so she got uh, one, and my kids have one. Yeah, and uh, I've been mean. I've been thinking about it, and uh, I've been thinking so about have, it. And I have to maybe, redo my bathroom, and I was thinking of maybe getting an actual. Uh, one. They're real easy to put in. Yeah, I but mean, I was even, thinking getting like a toilet with one built in already. Oh no, you can get them too if you can plug it in. Yeah, with just, warm yeah. water. Yeah. Okay, but I'm thinking a freak like you. Wait, probably Spi- like Spike's in water. England. He's probably has a bidet. How is like? Or no, he's not in England. He's in Canada. What am I thinking? <laughs> Who's in England? Who can talk to us about bidets? The trouble is, Jason would use the bidet as a mouthwash too because he doesn't care. <laughs> Drinky found so, it. All right, just paint it. Okay, what's the skinny on Jersey Fest? I know you guys have dirt. Going to be really pissed if it doesn't happen. Uh, we do not have that dirt. I haven't heard a word. Scott? So. Maybe you have heard some skinny. Can you say anything? I, I've i heard it's not going to happen. Okay, but then after that, I heard it was going to happen. So I don't know. I can only say this. I would think if it was going to happen, the advertising would have started by now. Okay, so I don't know. I, I don't want to sit here and say yes or no. My gut is no, it's not going to happen. But um, we'll see. Okay. I, uh, Um, Russell Clark, uh, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? uh, 20.1 miles per hour, 32.4 kilometers per hour, or 29.5 feet per second. And, uh, geez, Jason, Gold Bond pimping? Yes, he is. (laughs) Dude, I will gladly take a sponsorship from Gold Bond. Dude, uh, come on, everybody. I don't understand this. How could I be... Because you're a freak. No. Bam. Okay. Okay. What did I say to R- you? R- I'm, not sk- I'm not skinny. I'm not skinny by any means. That being said, how do you fat bastards walk around Wonderfest? Oh. <laughs> and I'm no. talking to you without having any problems. Without your legs rubbing together, any of that. Like what? Want to know how I walk around Wonderfest? Yeah. You don't. Proud. Proudly. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and again, I'm not skinny. I'm just saying <laughs> I have issues at my size. I don't know right. how people aren't rolling in gold bond before I go. And do it. You must have like these elephant nuts. Okay. That you got to put powdered sugar. It's on not even just that. Bond. It's the whole undercarriage. Like, all right. Your taint. Oh my God. Please gold bond. Hit me up. <laughs> I'd like a case. We talk about taint. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Raphael, favorite model and statue categories for each of you. Oh, wait, wait, what, where is it? Uh, 
I want to read it. Favorite model in statue categories for each of you. Does he mean contest or just in general, like stuff we buy? Just in general, what is our favorite maybe uh, genre of stuff or type of stuff? Scott, go ahead, because yours is easier. Well, so statue categories, I have a lot of superhero statues based on Marvel superheroes and stuff. So I guess you'd have to say that's probably my best statue category. My problem always has been with repaint statues is so many are painted like crap. Yeah. Okay. And I have a sh crap ton of bow and design stuff. And the early stuff was not painted that good. But as time went on, it got better and the sculpts got better. So as far as statues, that model categories, and I'm open to just about any, you know, classic monsters, obviously. Um, cartoon kits, super deforms, I always had a spot for. So it's, yeah, it's all over the place. For me. So mine is, isn't so much, it's, I really like original designs. And I do, there. I mean, if it's a movie I like, I tend to go for that sort of thing, but I'm a future guy and a Nirasawa Takea. Like when you see, and not so much their like takes on regular, like on IPs like Giver or something like that, but their original stuff to me is just, I'm a future dude. Like that's what got me into this is really into garage kits was future. And those like really strange, I like strange stuff, <laughs> But I'm a fan, like, I like some horror. I'm not a big classic horror b model builder. I, I think I have, like, one of each. Um, I do mostly stuff from more modern movies than anything, but I really love future original stuff. Okay, another catch anything, Jason? No, just VD again. <laughs> um, and uh, CG CD African play, Swallow. Uh, African Swallow. I think it's the same as the... Uh, other swallow when i was looking at uh, this jason what do you have against predators with boobs <laughs> i we've talked about that should i answer that again because we did get some there was some blowback on my what do i have against predators with boobs everything because it doesn't work it's not supposed to be that way <laughs> the mouth is not made and a nipple is made Buckle like it. the way a predator's mouth is it wouldn't work on a nipple there's no lips it's dumb there's so much better ways to take an alien species and make it look female than just sticking tits on it. Like it's dumb to me. It's just dumb. And there we go. There, wait, how long till the email comes <laughs> of Jason making someone mad this episode? Okay, here we go. Um, Bill Wilson difference between 3d resin and garage kit resin besides UV curable. Well, that's the difference. Um, you know, it's two different materials. I mean, it, it's, that's the difference. It's, you know, it's, uh, you know. Well, one is a, the, the regular resin that you know and use is a, is a two part mixture that mm -hmm. there's a chemical reaction that takes place that solidifies it with UV resin. The, the chemical reaction takes place from UV light. So there's no mixing. You don't have to do It's just as soon as it hits that UV radiation, it triggers it. Whereas with the two part mixture, it's a it's a totally different material. Um. Okay, uh, Mark Worthling. Mark Worthling. What's the most you have each spent on a single kit? Look at the dead air while we think <laughs> how sad we are. Now, I, I know it's up there. I think it's 400. It was a Kyoto Biolante. I think that's one of my most expensive ones. Kyoto Biolante. I, I think, think it was. I I've surpassed that um, or not. Yes. Well, okay. Single garage kit? Yeah. Would probably be. Um, I have a Ghidra kit that I bought that was three hundred dollars. Really? That's your your most is three hundred? Garage kit. I'm talking now. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Garage kit. I bought that flea rider from Charlie McGrady. And I that was over three hundred. My Kyoto Biolante was up there. Oh. My Frankenstein in chains. 
I think was close to 400. The one with the backdrop. Oh, okay. Yep. That makes sense. So I, I think that was probably my most expensive garage kit than anything that Pestilence comes out with. Cause they're always, you know, <laughs> but um, now the most I've ever sent spent on a styrene kit was $1,200 back in the day when I owned a King Kong Stromster. And that was back in 1989. I wonder what it would go for now if that other mess went for, because the Thronster's as rare as the go-kart. It's just not as desirable. So, uh, uh, Vlad just said, if you come down to our Texas coast, you'll catch, I was in Houston for two hours. <laughs> Eden small, Paul Burnett. Yes. Eden small. Thank you. Eden smalls. Okay. Um, Sean Connery, James Bond bus. Yes. That's that. That's on my grail list. So, uh, Wait, where does how am I so confused about where heavy metal lives? <laughs> I think he's I think that's on purpose. Uh spring for uh, Dan. Where's the next question? And we got other people that posted their grails. Oh, my sister in law lost the chat with the commercial. In their house. Oh. Where where are we? What's the next? Jason. What's the next? Jason Astroglide? Mm, no, I'm not doing the Astro. Although that gets sticky after a while. That's not going to lube you up forever. Uh, Ron Joseph did ask a question, and he's now banned. Uh, he got banned? He, we're going to ban him. I'm banning him, yes. What's Scott, the question? Explain why King Kong 76 is the absolute best King Kong movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> to me. CG played. Scott, Peter Jackson is going to be a Wonderfest. Are you going to pay for his autograph? Peter Jackson should pay for my autograph. Okay. Yeah. Hey, that reminds me. Did you see Guillermo del Toro's making a Frankenstein? Started yeah, I'm filming. Sure. I'm sure he'll butcher it. Okay. I, I think if anyone's going to do it right, he'll come close. Heavy metal spike. Name your price, Jason. Um, it's a gargoyle design from uh, McVeigh. And uh, Mark Worthling wants to know why you didn't even visit. I think that's self-explanatory. I was in the panhandle. I was on the opposite end of Florida. You know what I do with the panhandle? Yeah, I swing it, spank your mom with the okay. pan. <laughs> All right. Okay, All right. That wasn't even. That was not a good one. Where are uh, you in the list? I see one from. Uh... There was another one. Scrotum Club TV. <laughs> oh, Eric! Um, I want to mention you... this. Eric Tengren said, "I am wearing that same shirt, Jason." I want to talk about my shirt. Did you see this? Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Hold on, my earpiece fell out. You see this? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is a Eric Pigor's shirt. Check him out. I bought it the other day. It is the Aurora Frankenstein instructions that he went and changed a little couple things in there. It glows in the dark. Great shirt. I'll put a link to Eric. If you see him or talk to him, tell him you you saw it here, and that's where you got it from. Good taste, Eric. <laughs> Robert Trock, who is the greatest, either living or dead, hit builders. Not just painters, but kit builder, painters, scratch builders, dioramas, the whole enchilada. Oh, boy. Well, that'll just get us in trouble. Hold on. Wait, let's say this again. What? Who is the greatest, either living or dead, kit builders? Not just painters, but kit builder, painters, scratch builder, dioramas, the whole enchilada. We know who that Scott's going to say right this now. This is just going to get us in trouble. So, Who's, Well, ready. no, we can say who some of our favorite people are i'm not gonna say i'm not like because i think it comes down to taste right like yeah okay so i'm gonna i'll throw a few names out here that i think are very very good okay um steve riojas has done some amazing things i think mike he's wallace. the wallace mike wallace has done some amazing things i, I was just gonna say steve and mike are two of the best, if not the best, diorama guys. Okay. Because um, I really love Steve's, like, Steve has an, ima an imagination that most people don't have. Mm -hmm. And he can come up with some of the coolest, just scratch-built machinery and weird things that other people just would never think of. Whereas Mike Wallace is amazing in a different way, where he just does the most crazy attention to detail and destruction. No one does destruction better than Mike. Nobody. Like mm -hmm. when you look at a, one of his Godzilla things in a building cracking in half and people running and cars, like his sense of story 
through destruction is, I think, second to none. And I think Steve's is the same way when it comes to his original weird stuff that he'll do. Like when I think back to the model club contest and the stuff that Steve did for that, like that little Frankenstein doctor, weird little dude diorama. Like, yeah, that's, that's really, really cool stuff. When it comes to just straight up painting, Jeff camp is killing it lately. Some of his stuff that he's, he's kind of caught on with what some of what the miniature guys were doing recently and brought it over to the garage kit side of the world. His more recent stuff that he's done are just breathtaking. Um, and I'm trying to think back. Like when I first started, who really inspired me as a model? I like, I always think Dan Colonna, who he was one of the first people that re, like I talked to about how to paint an alien. And I love Dan stuff. Um, obviously David Fisher. Yeah. I mean, um, duh. <laughs> and Anthony Mestis early on, check those early kit builders. Yeah. For a lot of Anthony Mestis's stuff. So I, and Joe Dunaway, Joe Dunaway, like, I'm He's, not trying to slight anyone. No, we're not. Leave, I mean, I think again, yeah. it's personal taste. Leave your, who's your favorite painter? Leave it. Mark Worthing said Shepard Payne. Absolutely. Yeah. For miniatures and diorama stuff. Amazing. Yeah. And, and then recently, I mean, Joe Hudson um, has done some amazing things that I've seen. Yeah. And, um, you know, yeah. So it, it's, there's a lot of them out there. I couldn't pinpoint any one. I couldn't pinpoint any 10. Um, I'm with you on, on Steve stuff has a certain originality of it. I like when someone does something like that weirdo that I showed last time that was in the Celtics. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know who that was. Kendall Conniff does some really nice stuff too. So, I mean, it's stuff all over the place. These guys are all over. So, um, but for me too, I think some of the, a lot of the painters that inspire me are people that are not garage kit guys right now. Yeah. That that people aren't going to know. Jamie wants to know how we go from. Braille kits to talking about Jason's sweaty man bits. Yeah, that's a that's a great that's a great uh I don't know. Um wait, hold on. It's I gotta go back up. Raphael, that Cipriano Conan Scott showed in the last episode was badass. Yeah, it is. I do like it. Uh Mark Worthling, children, forget it, don't come over. Look, if we <laughs> want to come to your house, Worthling, we'll come over to your house. You don't have any say there anyway. Oh, um, John John said Rick Cantu. How do we yes? Rick. Yes, Rick can too. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And Saul. Um, yep. Steve Park. Yep. So, Although Steve uh, doesn't talk to me anymore. He blocked me. <laughs> bidet's the way to go, according to Cam. There you go. Man, uh, man, I think I think I'm gonna try a bidet. I wanna can I come over and try Joanne's? Uh you, no. No. <laughs> um Trox says he's gonna spring for a bidet one of these days. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, CG Blade says Rod Hickey. Jamie, you have a better chance of winning. <laughs> uh, Jesse, absolutely. So I think we got to our questions. I don't, there's no more questions. Uh, let me use Y2K Lube. Try WD40. I'm loving it. <laughs> um, Scrotum Club TV. I, I'm trying Come to on, think man. like Grail wise. Jamie, we need more classic style comic kits. Amen. Um, Mando deodorant. Paul Gill, look it up. Paul Gill says, Gold Bond does nothing for the stink. Mando, like it's, the, it's the lady that made uh, Lumi. Yeah. Your shit smells that bad. Bathe. Okay? I agree with I Yes, take a bath. What one model kit company would each of you want back that no longer exists? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, Janice. Um, Future. Well, they 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 still exist, but Future, not like they were. Um, I really well, no oh, gray zone. I love those skulls. I would love to see gray zone back doing skulls, like life size skulls now. Because he did have some life, like they were like the alien and the queen alien. Like if you did life size stuff now, mm-hmm. yeah. <clears throat> um, Volks. Russell Clark said Volks. Yeah. Oh, it's a gargoyle figure kick garage for McVeigh. Monkey yeah. butt, monkey butt is the best, Jason. Yeah. Hey, monkey butt's not bad. I have. I might have to switch over to that. 
Paul, I think, asked me Bigfoot, yes or no. Uh, that's a no, Paul. You know that. That is a yes. That is a yes. <laughs> uh, uh, what if a baby predator has a straw tongue? It's still not going to nipple. Uh, I don't think they had tongues. Jesse's agreeing with you about something. Oh, dear God. Wow. That's a first. Here's Jamie. I don't like mixing my resin, so I clean up my vats every time. <laughs> hmm. Twenty four hundred for Worthling. Oh, I know what it is too. He bought one of life size creatures. All right, what hey, else? Wilson, let's flood the Discord when this is over. Well, Bill, if you're going to be there, uh, no. Yeah, uh, there is a Discord. I don't. Yeah, I'll, I don't know if I'll be on or not. I'm trying to sign after. I need a break. Bigfoot, yes or no? Are we at the end of the questions? Remembering this was episode. good. Remembering last episode, do you plan on stop doing Model Club TV? It's always that possibility. Hey, Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa! Where, where'd, where'd you see this question? Where'd you see this question? Where are you I'm at? Have to ask it. So, um... I think I'm way behind. I see the last thing from Brent was new McVeigh bus, and then. Try Zibzorb powder instead of gold bar. Where are you looking? I don't know. It's, I'm at the very bottom. It, it like jumps around. So, what was Brent's uh, question about? About us quitting. Um, That's a good. I want to talk about that. Do on. we see an end to Model Club TV? Yes. <laughs> it was almost. Yeah, about, about it was and literally half. an hour, two hours, one hour and 57 minutes ago. This thing almost ended forever but in that aside i at some point i'm not going to do this anymore but i don't know when that's going to be um cam wrote no discord for jason he has a life bill wilson <laughs> <laughs> hi karate um hi karate all right any other actual questions for ask us anything uh, those were some good questions i like that uh, Scott, I have a question for you. Okay. Do you oh, plan Jason, on how many kids are your basement? Oh man, I don't know. They're kind of spread out at this point. I was just saying I'm I'm in the process. Ron Joseph said that, and I just talked to him the other day about cataloging vinyl records. I'm in the process of adding all of my music on Discogs to know what I have, and once I finish doing music, I am going to do what you did and catalog all my kids so i know what i have i don't know honestly i don't know okay uh what are we bringing to wonderfest i'm bringing jason <laughs> that's true you're bringing me so um i i'll have a few things i'll have the parks godzilla hopefully i don't know right now i'm printing for everyone else so i don't know what i'll have what i won't have and I just hit a major snag. My Jupiter screen died. And it looks like a lot of the people that have the original uh, Jupiters from the kits starter, their screens are starting to die. And they're out of stock right now. So I may be bringing nothing if I don't get a screen <laughs> by in time. I have two green lanterns, lanterns ready to go and a Supergirl. But I'll do some small stuff if I have to. But. Yeah, and I'm going to try and bring something to show paint-wise. I want to, I don't know. If there's anything that anyone wants from me that I've shown, now would be a good time to uh, shoot me a message and yeah. you, know, you know what you want. So. And I want to know, do people like the live? The lad said live shows rock. Do people would rather see a live episode every month than a recorded one? Now that I know where the stupid button to hit is? What has so. been gunned that you... What kit hasn't oh, uh, been done that you want to see made? Trevor wants a Model Club TV kit. What scale, Trevor? I'll save um, you one. Yeah, if you want the big or small, I got you one. I got okay. you a big one ready to go. Jesse, what it. kit hasn't been done that you want to see made? Scott? Thinking. I really... I want... And this is... And I know it's been done, but I want a really good one of Igor. Uh, Igor, what's his name? From uh, Son of Igor. Frankenstein. Oh, Igor. Yeah. From Son of Frankenstein. Like a really good one. Like, 
Um, but and the thing is, like, there's not even like some good movies out. That are there's some great stuff in the movie Brian and I watched in uh the oh my god, I just had a stroke. <laughs> The sci-fi movie we just watched. Oh my god! Well, that's me. I there was some it. really good stuff in there of like AI robots and stuff. What would I watch that crap for? <laughs> uh, there's some good stuff in there. Oh, someone said, Brian, if you're listening, we were talking about the cocaine bear and trying to find a model kit. Someone in the comments on the other episode said, "There's a, they're re-releasing the prehistoric scenes uh, cave bear, which could make a good cocaine bear substitute if you wanted to uh, do that." And I think I might try and do that. Can we see pics of Jason's collection? Trevor wants a small one. Well, then he's got to go to you. Yeah, I got it. I'll get you one. Uh, I've, got, I've got a big one. Ask Jason's mom. <laughs> Three recorded, then one live, then repeat. That's not a bad idea. Can we see pics of my collection? Yes, I don't have any. I have a girlfriend that likes to throw all her dirty clothes in my collection room before they go to laundry. So as of right now, I can't even go in that room and take a picture. Uh, I will tell you know what? My plan was to dust. I'm going to take pictures of everything and I'll put those next episode or the one after. My sister-in-law likes live if it isn't before a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> like she's doing any prep. Like she shampooed her carpet in her house. that looks like a funeral home or yeah. No. Okay. What time is the Easter egg hunt tomorrow? I have to be at my mom's at one. There's no hunt. Oh. though. Well, that means I got to be out of there by 1230, <laughs> but I'll have hunted all the eggs. Um, <laughs> So I, I made that joke about my sister-in-law's house. She's got this one room that my one little niece went in there one day and said, Mary's house looks like a funeral home. So I've teased her about it ever since. All right. Well, it looks like questions are winding down. So let's do this. Let's do our tribute here and, and ride it out. Um, and if we have, we could always stay longer if people want. I don't care. But let's talk about our tribute a little bit. Scott, why don't you go? Oh, I, before we do that, I want to talk about these. I got these at Adepticon. Um, from Turbo Dork. This may look like a regular paint palette. It's not. It's silicone. So when the paint dries in there, you just flip it out, pop the pieces out, and then these are silicone paint stirring sticks so that they don't get all... You don't jack up a paintbrush well, when you're mixing But shouldn't paint. you just pour your paint and back it in the jar and shake it? Isn't that easier? Yeah, I think that is easier. You know? Okay. Why all would right. you want to stir anything? Look, more stirring. Maybe I could use this spatula along with the stirring sticks. I wonder if I could use this in the resin to stir it. That might work too. But probably can because the silicone match you yeah, wipe off. That's a good idea. Stir that resin up. Um Joseph Future Kits are great for cutting up and kit bashing. Joe, you're right, but I can't believe you're doing that. Oh my god. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts really bad to see that happen. Yeah, oh, it's so oh oh yeah that's my if anyone has a vampoo wants to let it go for cheap not cheap but fair i'd be i'd be on yeah. that he'll also send you an autographed picture of his gold of his bond bottle just send out gold bond. with with gold bond on it Jeez. so let's do uh rick evans man uh like you said we knew things were bad when we recorded the last episode and then he died that I think it was so the next morning the next morning um yeah Rick was a again good guy always positive things to say not a negative bastard like me and you um he used to get on me because I'd bust Chinksy's balls and then he'd <laughs> call me up and start did you really say that to Chinksy and <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> Poor Chinksy has no one to defend him now. <laughs> You'd say to me, he goes, oh, well, it's a little harsh, don't you think? And I go, yeah, he kind of begs for it, doesn't he? So, uh, yeah. Um, but that being said, Chinksy took it pretty hard. Chinksy talked to Bill or uh, Rick quite a bit as well. And, uh, you know, it, uh, yeah, it, it's a shame, man. Rick, Rick was a good dude, you know? He was, uh, he was just, uh, you know, and, and, and it's one and of I those names say, that I, I was wrong forever. about. I was wrong about one thing, kind of about Bill, I think. Um, and that is, you know, I always felt bad about Rick because I, I said, man, this must just be, you know, kind of a lonely guy. He's into his nerdy stuff like we all are. And, and, you know, 
But I was so glad to see when he did pass so many coworkers and friends from the past post so many good things about him. And that yeah. was, that was good to see for him and for his family and, and stuff like that. So, um, Rick was, uh, Rick was a good dude, man. And it, it's a shame too young for something like this to happen to too nice of a guy for something like this to happen to. And, uh, yeah. Oh, great. Canadian money. Great. Fucking three cents. <laughs> Thank you, Thanks, Scotty. Buddy. We appreciate that. Um, but yeah, it, it's, uh, again, it's, um, yeah, it, it, it's a shame. It was kind of shocking. You know, we've lost others as well. And then in the course of since that happened, I lost an ex coworker. Today I got news of a childhood friend that I've known since I was in third grade past. So, it just keeps happening. Yeah, we got some know? bad news over here too. It, it... <sighs> and uh, not, so... I don't want to get conspiratorial, but it seems like people are dying younger and younger with cancer. Everybody, please, you know, if you see something weird, get it checked out. And and I get it. Some of that, yeah, I, it's scary, Scott. You went through it, um, but please. Yeah. I think if you catch it early, a lot of times it's preventable and curable now. So if your nuts need powder, you might want to have it checked out. I'm just, <laughs> um, but I want to, again, health where we, we do, our hobby is very, what, how can we say this politely? We're not playing football or running miles doing our hobby. We are uh, sitting and doing really non-healthy stuff. And breathing non-healthy stuff and touching non-healthy stuff. So if people can, that's weird. I'm not vintage. Why did that get retracted? What did you type? That's strange. No, he was asking, uh, who were we talking about? But oh, we're, uh, oh okay. But then it, underneath that, it says message. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, please. I, and I, I think if Rick maybe went a little sooner, he could have caught some of this a little earlier, but you know, it's terrifying to have to face that. And I understand not going to check stuff up. Uh, yeah. And Paul, Paul said it, uh, sedentary, get up and move, get up, walk around one. And somebody I listened to podcast that I listened to, his mom passed away and she fell down the stairs at 71 and died. And one of the leading causes of death for as people to get elderly is falling, Scott, <laughs> downstairs. So please, uh, push-ups are far less important than squats. Everyone, pr- your balance, practice balance, walk, get, take care of yourself. It's coming from the guy that hits his head at least once. I bump my head at least once a day. Once a day, it's because I in my head, there's nothing from here, <laughs> but but I just. I don't want to see more. It's been a really rough couple of years with this show. Just in this show alone, people that have gone and mm-hmm. it's, it sucks. So please everybody, I, I, I eat like shit. I will be the first to admit that. And I need to change that a little bit, but I use a little too much salt here. Oh, you think, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it was sad to see him go and it, He's one of those guys. It's a name that's been around since I, as long as I can remember in the hobby Mm -hmm. and it sucks, but it's going to happen to every single one of us at some point. And, uh, we'll see. I just hope everybody goes with grace. Like we can. And it's awful. No, it is. And and again, Rick was, uh, He's a good guy, man. He's just a good guy. He was a good ambassador for this hobby. He really was. Yeah. Kendall says, "Uh, I live in Colorado. I've had a couple skin cancers removed. My dermatologist said, if you live in Colorado all your life and you spend a lot of time outside, you will get skin cancer. And that's, I I have a feeling it's because you're closer. So you're closer to the sun. Like the atmosphere isn't as thick and blocking out some of that stuff. Um, (laughs) <laughs> Trevor, I'm sitting here drinking beer and eating cheese popcorn. For some reason, my blood work comes back perfect every year. That's awesome. That's because Trevor's already dead. Okay, <laughs> that's why. All right, he's a zombie. He comes. To, <laughs> yeah. he just comes back. Uh, then my my uh, 
Sister Laura oh my is God. kind of falling. Somebody ah. needs to make a diorama of zombie Trevor drinking beer, oh, <laughs> smoking popcorn. cigarettes. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh so um Okay, then, uh, so Jace, for Lemmy's sake, do not delete the chat this time when you re-upload or whatever this. So that is I have to figure out. I don't know how that happened last time. I don't know how to save it. I gotta make sure it does. So gotta keep talking while it So yeah, I I don't know. Um my sister in law asked, is this an elderly senior crowd? No one's as old as you, Mary. Okay. No one is as old as you. My sister in law is a young sixty two, but you know, she looks eighty. You know, it's all right. So uh So I don't and Spike, I don't know. That's something I gotta look into. I don't know why the chat the chat might go away for this. And if it does, I'm sorry. Um, the way to find this episode is to go to the live tab and I think what I'll do is download it and then just re-upload it as an episode but Check if you go out, to Bill the Wilson li- posted his IQ <laughs> uh, alright you ready? <laughs> I'm going to close it out <laughs> yeah we'll go alright so here's our tribute to Rick Evans uh, um, anybody real quick if you got anything else you want to add in chat We'll give you a couple minutes here, but we're going to close it out with this Rick Evans. There's some really good pictures in here. And it's as I was making it, it was kind of, it was hard. Cause like, Oh shit. Someday this could be, someone's going to do this. Shit. Actually, no, no one will care. Um, anything else? I, chat wise? Password. I, I want to say it. thank you to everybody who came here and dealt is still here after our crappy beginning. Um, now that won't happen again. Cause I figured it out. Uh, and thank you to everyone that super chatted and donated some money to us. That really is going to go a long way. And then, yeah, the first thing we're buying is a camera for Scott. <laughs> um, I, I, I love every single one of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us all these years. At some point, yes, this will go away, but it'll be a little while. And you're the best crowd. I love it. I love when people participate. And Eric, I think you and I are like, say, like one year apart. Anything uh, else, Scott? That is it. Uh, we're going to go. And here's our tribute to Rick Evans. And we'll see you guys next time, hopefully with George Stevenson. Yeah, I think George, yeah, George maybe next. You can continue to chat for a little while. I think this goes, the tribute is six minutes of pictures and stuff. So I'm going to let it go. I'll be here. I can, uh, I'll shut it. I have to stay here to shut it down afterwards. Again, thank you everybody for coming on and Let's see if I can do this and make sure I'm going to wave goodbye. Now I'll probably screw something up here. Full screen web window. Make sure we get to the right place. Yes. All right. Hang on. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Scott, keep talking while I do this. Oh, <laughs> I have to you, do something. You know what? I, I can only do so much. So, uh, People that yeah. see media some, player. There we go. Okay. Now you're showing I got the, it. The chats up. This is one thing I had to, uh, I couldn't do until everyone was here. So let me center it. And there we go. Okay. I'll go back to us for a second. There's us. Thank you, everybody. And seriously, you're the best audience. Love you. We'll talk to you next time. Rick, you'll be missed. Absolutely. Do you want to say your other thing? Is that, is that the end? No. Oh, yeah. Rick, great job, citizen. Agreed. All right. Here we go. This is not working now. Sorry, I screwed that up. It was right there. Wait, I got it. Oh, man. Sorry, Rick. Rick's probably laughing at us like you idiots. Why is this not? Let's do that. I'm going to make this fit. Perfectly. Everybody's watching this is like, you're an idiot. Like, got it. There we go. Okay.
and we're gone. See you later, everybody. Take care.